Interesting, just so po folks have some background, Hawaii Executive Collaborative has been leading these workshops and partners with we Rio's partners to try to get all of these voices around the same table. You can read more about the entire initiative uh, in Honolulu Magazine. They've devoted the entire issue to this uh, initiative, and you have an editorial on there <laughs> as well. One of the things I want to ask you about, because when we talk about you know, Native Hawaiian movements and Aloha Aina and some of the things you've been talking about today, there can be a feeling from those in our community, and, and I know this for me, I grew up on the Big Island, but I am not Native Hawaiian, and there is this feeling of, can I really participate? Is this really my Hawaii too? Um, am I somehow pretending to be something I'm not if I use Hawaiian language or if I try to adopt these uh, principles myself? Can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, you know, in fact, that's part of this idea of what what is unifying us and and if this the, the place the idea of aloha aina is not just for hawaiians it's for anybody who loves this soil you know and, and when uh, so i wrote that and i talked about something called ko hawaii and before we did that we used to when we were growing up we used to talk about uh, stuff like you know, we were trying to find ways of when you grow up in a village, everybody, when you're in school, didn't matter whether you're Hawaiian, Japanese, or whatever, you know, you you guys were all bunched together. You were the, the gang, you know. And, and and so they used to call themselves us guys. Us guys hang together, right? But in those days, that was just a nice way of calling friends. What we didn't know was we had the solution when we would say us guys from Honoka'a hang together because what we were united around was our hometown. So that's Tongi, right? Speaking from over there. Kahuku live in Seattle. You know, so getting back to the what bonded us occurred when all of a sudden you listen to people like Paul Kanaheli talk about what Aloha Aina actually means. It's a reciprocal relationship with the people. So I wrote the editorial, and there's a kind of a backstory to that that's probably, in my opinion, you know, just as interesting as the editorial. And, and just like you, um, I was in the workshop sitting next to this young woman, with, uh, uh, which, by the way, means the age of my children <laughs> these days, and, and, and this young woman, and she was... Um, she, she was sitting next to me, and she was listening to this. She's a big-time CEO now of one of the major corporations in Hawaii. And she looked up to me, and she said, You know, Gal, I, um, I used to dance hula for you at Washington Place. And she was in this keiki, keiki hula troupe. And I said, Really? Fantastic, you know? And she said, Yeah, but when I got to be like 19, as much as I loved hula, and I, she apparently did it for years, and she got very good at it. She said, I decided I couldn't, I'm not Hawaiian. So, you know, it's no longer my world. And other people said that, you know, and, uh, during the course of this. And I said, you know, if you want to be Hawaiian, take the word. It's not even a Hawaiian word. You know, it, it's a word, it was a designation in the time of the kingdom, it was the what we called everybody who was a subject, but it was forced up on the rest of. Uh, 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 it was used as a word of division during the territorial days because everybody was classified by their own groups. I said, but all of us share something. We all belong to Hawaii, you know, and that's when I wrote this thing called Ko Hawaii. Which is really kind of interesting because I don't know the word in English, uh, the equivalent of ko, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a word meaning possession. You know, so the, the noun that follows it means it possesses you. So we have, we all share this common belief in, in Hawaii. We all love it. We all are equally equally responsible for making it better. And that was what this is about. And that's my search for the general population, for everybody. You know, how do we unite? We unite by recognizing 
Lahaina. You know, and uh, that comes from the kupuna. That's that kind of unification is possible because we taught so many people, so many people, how to speak Hawaiian. That that concept that an island could own you is not foreign. It's accepted here. It's foreign in Western thinking. But by the way, Bob Kraus, longtime reporter, and I don't think he's with us anymore, wrote a book called The Island Way. And for those, and he was struggling to enunciate the same concept 40 years ago. And here we are. One of the other things that has come about through, uh, you know, this this movement of rediscovering Hawaii. So uh, through Reels Partners that has come in to help to navigate this time and space with all these individuals were the very scenarios that they put forth uh, and that were developed by some of these local leaders about what Hawaii would look like, uh, say, you know, 20, 20, 30 years down the line. Uh, if you can explain to us the significance of the scenarios and how you think that's helping to shape this movement. Well, I think the scenarios allowed people to talk about uncomfortable things because what we were prognostic, prognosticating was uh, didn't necessarily have to happen. We didn't necessarily have to agree with it. But we knew one scenario, for example, was we knew if we keep do, doing things the way we're doing it now, that 20, 30 years from now it would be disastrous, you know. Um, another scenario was that uh, if America keeps doing what it is what it's going through now and dividing the country, we may find ourselves floating out in the middle of the Pacific by ourselves. Uh, you know, this is not something that some sovereignty a- uh, activist uh, was predicting. This is a, a real possibility that can happen. So, how do we deal with a scenario that could happen? Um, when the, for example, the independence uh, scenario was brought out, the first reaction was, "Oh my God, you know, I'm, how do we get food into here? And how do we? Well, maybe if that's a possibility, what we ought to do is become uh, food independent. I mean, this place fed over a million people at one time. How do you do it?" Maybe we should colonize Hawaii and raise taro again. You see? See, the excitement comes from not being afraid of what might happen, but taking the steps that would be make, make life good if it did. And, and so colonizing Hawaii is, is an exciting concept. It's not, you know, I mean, for those people who want it, it's like wine. You know, the best bottle of wine, you, you, you would grow, that, that, that taro would be grown in the low, the old-fashioned way. Hard work, brother. I know, I've done it. And I don't, I went to college because I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life, you know. But somebody, people love it. And for that color, you should pay a price. On the other hand, we got exciting young Hawaiians working at the University of Hawaii learning about agriculture that can grow taro using a spray drip irrigation that making it better as long as you're not you know like mutating things and dumping chemicals on it you 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 by the way that's another niche that you can see this is the possibilities that come out of um, loving where you are reacting to where you are and for me what I got most excited about was the idea is I saw the great divisions happening in on the continent to say I, I want to do everything I can to make sure they don't that doesn't happen here you know and that's where the, this whole idea about what unites us became important to me so my personal mission is I want to move from ethnicity to something like nationality nationality being ko hawaii we are all here without losing identity See, that's the purpose of my...